Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm making a short video to show you how I interfaced my Pokies 57U card uh, to a encoder and then use that encoder to manipulate, in this case, the altimeter knob, if you will, in the sim, but by using a physical dial. So after watching the video that's attached uh, in front of this video, um, I'm going to go into how I did it in the Pokies card itself. A couple of things. Number one, I've had this Pokies card for one day. I am not anywhere close to being proficient with it, knowledgeable of it, its capabilities, what have you. But I've read enough, uh, and as a matter of fact, from feedback from you you guys yourselves um, that's how I decided to go is with the uh, F4 to pokies um, and the pokies boards um, instead of Arduino uh, I still may use an Arduino at some point for certain things but right now we're going down the path of using the pokies card for what I can get out of it and building a cockpit is is not something that we all know happens over a weekend, a month, six months, or even maybe a year. Uh, I don't have that kind of time to dedicate to it, but uh, I want to make it as realistic as I can. So that's the reason I uh, started testing the waters with encoders so that I could put buttons and dials in the cockpit. So how do you program a Pokies card to read the digital encoder? Real simple. Uh, first thing is uh, download the software. Once you get the software downloaded, go ahead and crank it up. I'm running Windows 7. Eventually, my cockpit build will be on Windows 10, but for right now, I'm running Windows 7. Uh, so when you run your program, it wants to know what you, which Pokey card you want to connect to. Right now, I only have one. I have three others on, on their way, but right now, just the one. So I'm just going to connect to it. And when I connect to it, um, what you're looking at is all the input outputs that are on that board that you saw in the video previously. Um, and, and the input outputs have input output capabilities. Some have other capabilities. And it is dependent upon you to look in the manual to understand which pins have uh, different capabilities uh, other than just standard input and output. Um, I ended up just using pins, uh, input pins one and two, and the ground pin on the same side for the first encoder. Um, so all I had to do at this point is I went to pin one, and I was gonna, I'm telling Pokies a little bit about what is connected into pin one. Of course, that red wire from the video is connected. Right now it's set to inactive, so first thing we need to do is say, hey, we got to use that pin, so let's turn it on for digital input. And you, when you do that, you get this additional uh, capabilities area, and uh, great to see the tab encoders and counters. So you click over there, and we're going to in. It's going to be an encoder, and as soon as I click encoder. Its assumption is the first channel I want to tell it about is channel A of the encoder, and it is. It's straightforward. I don't really have to do anything other than what I've just done now. And then I need to tell it what key, in this case, I, I, that I want to send. So for the purposes of this demo, since the encoder is set up right now as channel A uh, for signal line 1, I'm just going to tell it to send an uppercase, so I'm hitting the shift button up, and uppercase A. And then I need to tell it about pin number two, which was the uh, green wire in the board. It's also part of the same encoder. First I need to turn it on as an input, go over to encoders, select encoder. At this point, I think they've done a pretty good job with this software because as soon as I click it, it automatically assumes that this is channel B of that encoder because with the encoder you need uh, at least three wires uh, one for channel A, one for channel B, and one for the common uh, ground connection. 
Um, other encoders can have, uh, I think, what they call signal pins, um, but that's not the purpose of this video, so we're not going to get into that. So this is set up the way I want it. It's channel B. We're going to go back over here, and for this demo purposes, we're going to send a shifted B, which should give me an uppercase B. Now that is not mapped to the game. In the game, for increase um, of the altimeter, it is a an apostrophe, I believe, and for a decrease, it is a semicolon. You'll need to look in your key file and and understand in from Falcon what key presses you have set up for your callbacks. They could be different than mine, so that is up to you to check in your key file. I checked and I found out that it was an apostrophe and um, and um, a semicolon and another key uh, point a lot of people you know just want to hook up a joystick and fly and they don't really care about the key file and they just figure out how that all works uh, and they use what's probably given to them out of the box um, my suggestion is that you become familiar with the key file I'm going to throw it up in the window here just so you can see it real quick um, because this is where I got the information and I understood what it was uh, wanting to send. So right here in this area, I've highlighted the two lines that handle the callback for incrementing and decrementing the out, uh, pressure knob. Uh, one increment or decrement at a time. It looks like it says 10 there, but that's not a zero. That's some funny character I posted online. I'm want to get some information about that but anyway you have to read the manual to understand this is the um, ANSI hex code for the key um, you can look online and find out what that sends this uh, th this uh, section uh, of the line tells it that this is an alt shifted state because what you click quickly can realize here is all of these are the same key codes over and over again 28 uh, 27, 28, 27, 28, 27, 28, 27. So how can the same keys be used for all of these different uh, capabilities? Well, that's because this modifier number right after the key code tells it whether it's a shifted and a keystroke, whether it's a alt shift. I, and again, I don't know if two is alt shift. I don't know if four is uh, control alt shift. But what I do know for sure is that 5 is Alt, Shift, and the keystroke. That's all covered in the uh, BMS tutorial. So you can figure that out. Uh, you can also look at Alternative Launcher if you use that. And you can see how that might be mapped there. Um, it'll give you the same information. It'll actually give you the key stroke to send, not the hex code. So it does make it a little bit easier, but so get into your key file a little bit, it, it will become helpful. So the purpose of this demonstration, um, we're going to send an A and a B, depending on if um, channel A goes high or channel B goes high. And the easiest way to test that is just to bring um, Notepad and make it the focus. So before we do that, we have to send our programming to the device. So now that I've got it set up the way I think it's going to work, I'm going to send it to the device. It's saving the settings. And something to understand about this software, this program, configuration program, does not need to be running when you're using your SIM. This is just to program the card so that when you do power it up and it's providing information, it provides it automatically. This is just to initially program the board the way you need it based on the inputs and outputs that you want. All right, so we've sent it and you can't see now, but I'm going to grab the encoder and I'm going to make focus. I'm going to make the notepad window focused and now I'm going to begin to turn it. There's my A's and I'm going to turn it the other direction. There's my B's, A's, B's. I'm just turning it back and forth. So that's it. It's plain and simple. Now, 
I'll change this back around to the correct keystrokes as they're recorded in my key file. But that's all there is to making a Pokies board work with an encoder. And I venture to say that it's probably fairly easy for a lot of encoders and standard switches. I have seen a lot of posts as it pertains to logic and um, there's other tools out there from Postscope, uh, one of them being um, PoBlocks, where you can build um, flows for how things should work and then ultimately send it to the device. Uh, I've just begun to scratch the surface on that. When I get a little bit of understanding, um, I'll report back and, and maybe do another video. I hope this helps. Thanks, everybody. All for now.